uh, welcome to another video of Pequeño Cerdo Capitalista. Uh, the name in, in oh, Spanish it would be <laughs> Little Capitalist the little, Pig. The Little Capitalist Pig. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So today, as you see, we have, we have the honor to have Seth Godin, the author of Purple Cow. You have seen the review in the channel. And also, like, um, Icarus Deception, it's in English. Yeah, that's what we say. Uh, so uh, today we're going to have, like, a little talk about uh, leadership marketing and so on. So okay. um, I was very impressed for all your ideas about uh, like the I, I don't know the name in, in English, but uh, el marketing del permiso, like when you permission marketing. Permission marketing, uh, and I'm amazed that it was in '99 when you wrote it. 20 years ago. And they are starting to do email marketing with like these ideas about trust. Yeah. And about uh, not really like sending like Spam. very strange random messages yeah. but what is happening now uh, for example with social media because we are like becoming a little bit like TV like advertisement also yes yeah, so it's we can begin with this the internet is the first mass medium not newspapers not TV not radio the first one that wasn't built to make advertisers happy okay. so the reason we invented television was so we could run television ads that's why it was built But we didn't invent the internet so we could run internet ads. So that made marketers upset. Okay. So social media exists not so that we can friend people and swipe right. It exists so that they would have a place to run ads because marketers want to do that. So social media is actually an extension of TV. Yes. And we are doing like the same mistakes uh, like in advertisement wise. That's right. Okay. And well, for example, you have like something very interesting that is like your type, uh, like you, you have like a, a kind of blog that you do every day. That's right. So that's a very different type of communication. How do you think that communication mm. in order to engage with communities should be, like should it be outside social media or is it a way or, or how? Or so I don't use Twitter and I don't use Facebook. Actually, that was one of the questions. Like yeah. on Twitter, they ask us, why don't you tweet? I'll, I'll explain. <laughs> so I've written 7,000 blog posts. Yeah. I write a blog post every single day and I've been doing it for 15 or 20 years. That means that if Twitter comes or Twitter goes, it doesn't matter. I'm still there. And I can put my blog on Twitter, it is. I can put my blog on Facebook, it is. But I own it. And that I own the connection directly to the reader. So I have a million people who read my stuff every day. And no one can take it away. It's me and them. And that is an asset worth building. That's the, cease, the thesis of permission marketing is anticipated personal and relevant messages to people who want to get them. And anyone can do that. But you have to start now. Uh, what do you mean, like, anyone can do it? Like, what would, I mean, I know, I know tips is not exactly that, but, like, what I find is that, like, in Purple Cow, you say that we usually think that marketing is what we say about products, but marketing comes from building That's right. something meaningful, not for everyone. Well, but look at what you've built, right? You didn't get Televisio or someone else to give you permission. Yeah. You built it. You have a channel. And Twitter can't take it away from you, and Facebook can't take it. It's your channel. So that's a modern version of what I'm talking about. There doesn't have to be a blog, but the point is, if you're sitting there tweeting every day hoping to get likes, hoping to get followers, mm -hmm. that's just not going to work. Of and the reason people. it's not going to work is because everyone else is doing that too, and you're racing to the bottom trying to yell louder than the other guy. Why? Why is that a good thing? You're not the customer of Twitter. You're the product. You are giving them free work so they can sell more ads. And how do you have conversations with your audience? Because, like, for example, in your blog, like, a lot of people have comments. Yeah, I have day. no comments. You have no comments, right. yeah. So I'm having a conversation with you. Okay. You're a person. I can see you. We can talk. I don't need to have a conversation with a million people. Of course. It's just like you don't have a conversation with the Game of Thrones people. It's a show. This is what they made. So I get plenty of feedback. Plenty of people can talk to me. But who said you need to hear from everyone? You don't need to hear from everyone. Reading all the negative reviews, all the trolls, all the people yelling at you, why? What does that make better? It doesn't make anything better. And where do you take reviews like seriously or, or, or watch which kind of, of comments? Or, or, or Well, not exactly comments, but this kind of feedback do you take into account? So five years ago, I stopped reading my reviews on Amazon. <laughs> okay. I haven't read one ever since. And the reason is I've never met an author 
who said, I read all my one-star reviews and now I'm better at writing. It doesn't okay. make you better at writing. And you don't have to please everyone, which is also That's, a principle of In fact, account. you shouldn't want to please everyone. So I don't read any negative reviews. If someone sends me an email that's not anonymous, I'll read it and I'm open to criticism, I like it. But if someone just wants to dance on my face, dance <laughs> on somebody else's face, please. I like the expression. One of my friends, which, which is also a blogger and a big institution in, in financial education, Roberto Moran, uh, wanted to do a question to you. Okay, bring he, it on. He really liked uh, Icarus Deception and he wanted to know whether, if there was any case in your life when you found a uh, I, well, not exactly a job, but maybe something in, in which you had to quit and you regret it. Um, well, see, regret is a choice. Okay. And if you're going to move forward and do these projects and create this art, you can choose to have regret anytime you want. So, would it have been better If I hadn't sold Yo-Yo Dine and figured out how to turn it into Facebook, maybe, but look at all the things I got instead, right? And so what I've decided is it doesn't make sense to choose to have regret. It makes more sense to quit when you need to quit, keep the promises to the people you can make promises to, and look in the future. By the way, it's a great book and I love the premise because it talks about making an art form of what you do. So yeah. that's, that's a beautiful idea Thank you. on how to, to live on. Actually, like for those who do not know, uh, like I love the mixture of, 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 the, of your background because you are in technology but you're also a philosopher. So, so that's very interesting. And what are you gonna, like some of the people that are gonna watch us today didn't have the opportunity to come to Wobby and the topic is really interesting. So could you just give them an idea so they get like a hint of your talk? Well, um, you know, I've been lucky enough to be on a bunch of podcasts and to post some of my talks online. So rather than do a two minute pretend version of my <laughs> hour long talk, I would encourage people to go look them up. That's the magic of the internet. More important to me is that people speak their mind, say something that needs to be said in a generous way. Don't hide because you don't know enough. You know enough, you're just hiding. So what are you going to say? What are you going to connect? What are you going to point to? Where are you going to lead? If you do that before you go to bed tonight and then do it again tomorrow, you'll have done it two days in a row. Wow. And that's, your, uh, that's a great way to, out, to, to outstand, maybe out of the crowd. Uh, because right. most of, of us do not really make questions to ourselves. No, we don't. We just try to fit in. And the problem with fitting in all the way is then you become invisible. Well, of course, like, I, uh, you should read all his books. They, are, they all have very... Like, that's something I really like about your books. Like, some authors tend to repeat like from one book to another, but most of them have like one very specific idea. So for example, I, I really like Thrives. Thank you. And uh, uh, this, this idea of, of making a, move, a movement can, I mean, there are many examples in the book, but can movements be profitable? Sometimes. It depends on what you're trying to do. Nike is a movement and they make a billion dollars every month in profit, right? Other movements like the civil rights movement weren't built to be profitable. So, I, you know, I think capitalism is not an end of it to itself. Capitalism is uh, something that can fuel a mission. But if you're not actually making something you're proud of, the fact that you're getting paid for it is sort of worthless. Totally. And you're a big reader. I know it's very difficult to ask for favorite books because you have like lists almost every month. <laughs> so you read a lot. But which are like some of the books that you reread? Do you reread books? Uh, there are two books that um, I listen to or reread every two months. Uh, one is called The Art of Possibility okay. by Ben and Ra Zander. And it's a magical, magical book. And the other one's called The War of Art by Steve Pressfield. And um, I think those two books might change your life. I can also recommend the works of Pema Chodron, who is a Buddhist teacher. And I think when you hear her words, it will resonate with you. Okay, so really, thank you so much for your time. This was very generous. Uh, if you want to know anything else about Seth Godin, can you tell them your, your web pages? You, you have like launched um, 
like your latest book is you know in the form of a very interesting magazine very right. beautiful exactly so the latest book is called what to do when it's your turn it's at your turn dot l-i-n-k i run two courses one's called the alt mba okay. and the other one's called the marketing seminar but if you want to read my free stuff and there's a lot of it just type seth into google that's all you have to do you're gonna be in the number one from the ranking because that's the result of building a community yeah <laughs> day after day Thank you so much. And, well, I hope you have enjoyed this talk. It was a great opportunity for all, for all of us to, to talk to you. It's like a dream come true. So thank you so much and see you next week. <laughs>